what can be simpler in React than conditional rendering? If something, render this, otherwise render that. But nothing is as simple as it seems in React, and even a regular if statement can lead to quite mysterious behavior. Check out this code that renders two different input components depending on some Boolean variable. It's a form where you declare whether you're a business or a person, and enter the appropriate tax ID, for example. Consider this situation. I type something in the field, realize that I'm not actually a person but a business, and flip the checkbox. And the text is still there. But those are different inputs that I render. When they supposed to reset the state when I flipped between them? Do you know the answer out of the top of your head? Okay, spoiler alert. The answer is a fancy word called reconciliation. React diffing algorithm, in other words. Understanding it and how it works will not only answer why this bug appears, but also how to fix it easily and how to force this behavior if you actually need it. Also, how key attribute plays a role here and why. And as a bonus, why we shouldn't create components inside other components. Which seems completely irrelevant here, but you will see that it's very much connected. Let's start with what is that reconciliation thing and why should we care. And let's take a look at this example. A standard form with the output of this form just normal HTML. Form, checkbox, and input. But React actually doesn't operate on that HTML on DOM elements directly, like jQuery would in the old days. Direct DOM operations are quite slow. Instead, it creates what we sometimes call the virtual DOM. Just a giant tree of objects. Those are called fiber nodes. All the internal logic of React, all the comparison of everything, all re-renders, all of them are happening using this tree, not the DOM elements themselves. And only when it's time to first mount the app on the screen, React generates HTML from that object and uses native append child API to add it to the document element. Or if re-render happens somewhere in the app, React first will update everything in the tree, and only then will try to apply those changes to the DOM elements. If an element is added or removed from the tree, then it will be added or removed from DOM as well. If, however, only data on an element in the tree changes, then React will reuse already existing instance of that element on the React side and its DOM node, and just update it with new styles or attributes. React actually tries to reuse existing instances as much as possible. This is not only faster than constantly removing and adding elements, but also allows to preserve things like local state between re-renders. But how it identifies which elements can be reused in this form, for example, and which cannot? with the help of the type property. This form will be represented as this object. You see, every single one of the elements have type. If we are rendering just a normal HTML tag, the type will be string. Components will be functions. The entire function that we normally think of as input component will be there. Now, if in this form re-render happens for any reason, then React will just go through this object step by step and compare types before and after the render. First element, the type is exactly the same, the string form, so it will reuse already existing element. Next is an array, so here React will compare elements according to their position in the array. First element with the first one, this is our checkbox before and after. Second with the second. Input before and after. All of them have the same type, so all of them React will reuse between the re-renders. In React lingo, it means that all of them simply will re-render. Wherever we type in that input field, or whether checkbox is checked or not checked, will be preserved. 
if one of the elements is rendered conditionally based on this state variable. The procedure will be exactly the same. Only in this case, the second element in the array will change. Before re render, we had input component as the second element. After re render, we have null at this place. That will be the signal to React that the input component needs to be unmounted. And everything that is associated with it, like its instance state and DOM element, should be destroyed. In the opposite situation, we will have the mounting of component if a second place in the array transitions from null to input. What does all of this mean for the form from the beginning and its weird behavior? Let's take a look at this code and transform that into fiber objects. We have an array of children here. Checkbox is hidden behind the comment in the first item. And conditional input as the second item. If we take a look at what is happening here when the state value changes from false to true, it will be this. Before is company is false, we have checkbox as first item and input as second item. After is company is true, checkbox again as first item and input again as second item. Although we think that we render a different input there, from a React perspective, it's not. It's second position in the array before and after, and input type before and after. As a result, React will think that on second position is the same element, and will reuse its instance and DOM node. And we will see that the text stays here when we flip checkbox back and forth. How to fix it if this is not how we intended the form to work? One way to do it is just to make sure that the type changes between re-renders. And the easiest way to do it is just to render those items separately. Move them into different places in the array. Now, instead of two elements, we have three. First, the checkbox hidden inside the command. Second is input on null. And the third one is again input on null. Now, between re-renders, a first input will transition from null to input, so this input will be mounted. And the second, the opposite, from input to null. So this one will be unmounted. React is not going to be confused anymore, will not reuse the instances, and state and text that we type will not be preserved. If you don't like this fix for some reason, there is another way to force the same behavior, with the help of key attribute. You probably already seen that attribute. React forces us to add it every time we render dynamic list. It helps React to identify elements of the same type within the same array of children. If we transform that code into already familiar objects, we will see that we have an array of identical children before and after the render. So React would have to always reuse the first element for first array item, second for second, and so on. But the problem here is that this array is dynamic. We can easily add items there, remove some of them, or even reorder them. And we need to make sure React understands that somehow. Otherwise, it will just reuse instances as normal and we will see pretty weird bugs with state being preserved in wrong items. This is where key helps us. It serves as an additional way to identify elements. Those that have the same type and the same key will be reused between re-renders regardless of their position in the array. So in case that re-render was triggered because of reordering those items, React will know to reuse the first instance and DOM node for the second item in the array after re-render. If I type something in the first input, for example, after reorder, the text will move with the input and be on the second place. The code example for this behavior with and without key is linked in the description, by the way, if you want to play around with it. Now that the key purpose is clear, the question arises. 
Why all of this is important for our initial bug? There are no dynamic lists here. And the answer is, yes, this is true, but it doesn't matter. Key behaves in exactly the same way for any array of children, regardless of whether they are dynamic or static. So in here, if we just add different keys to those inputs and transform this into already familiar objects, we will have this situation. Type of the second element still stays the same, good old input, but the key has changed, transitioned from person to company. And as a result, React will unmount the first input, destroy everything that is associated with it, and mount the second input from scratch. The state will reset exactly as intended. Fun fact. If we apply this knowledge differently, we can actually force the state preservation between inputs that are in different places in the array. If you remember the first fix, when we separated company and person inputs, having those inputs in different positions in the array forces the first one to unmount and the second one to mount when state changes. But if we add exactly the same key to them, we will get this behavior. In object before, we will have input with the key tax as the third child in the array. And in the object after, we will have a second child in the array with exactly the same type input and exactly the same key tax. There will be no mounting and mounting anymore. React will just reuse again the instance and the already existing DOM element. Everything that you type in that input will be preserved between re-renders if I flip the checkbox. Okay, all this messing around with arrays and keys is quite fun. But let's return to something more practical. One final very important piece of information that can be extracted from the reconciliation algorithm is why creating components inside other components is a bad practice. Not related to keys at all, but has everything to do with how reconciliation works. As you might know, creating components inside other components is very bad. If I write code like this, every time the form component re-renders, the input component will remount itself. It will be very slow compared to normal re-render. Also, it will lose its state on every remount. Basically, you won't be able to even type anything there if a re-render is triggered by typing. Considering everything that we discovered about reconciliation, can you answer why this happens? Let's again convert it into objects. Going to be the most basic one, just an object with type input both before and after. But the catch here is, those are different input functions. The input function is declared inside form component. It's local to it. So every time re-render of form happens, the function will be recreated. And in JavaScript, you can just compare functions. Not like this. They are not primitive values. So comparing them will always result in false. But this is exactly what we're trying to do here. So as a result, React will think that those components are different, simple comparison of their type returns false, and it will unmount the first one before, destroy everything that is associated with it, including its state, and mount the one that is after. And we are getting remounting and poor performance and bugs as a result. Solution? Reserve the reference to the input function so that React can compare it properly. And the easiest way to do it is to extract that input outside. Now the function is not recreated. Its reference is stable between re-renders. Comparing type before and after will give us true. And React will just re-render the input component, preserving its state and instance. That is all for this time.
All code examples to play around with are linked in the description. Along with the article on the same topic that has more detailed information and even more code examples. Hope the video was useful, you had fun and learned something new today. Until next time!